Okay, we're live. <laughs> hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, it's just us two today. Just let y'all know. <laughs> Sadly, no. Sadly, no, but it's okay. And Maddie will be back next live, so it'll be good. Yeah. Which I think is the next one on her channel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, it's gonna be. I, f I forgot. It would be kind of awkward if she wasn't there and we were on her channel. <laughs> that would be awkward. Just listen to her like, well. <laughs> no, but we are here to, you have the cover, so. <laughs> yeah. I just have, I can't find my cover. To talk about A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. Hi, Lessa. Lessa? Lisa? Lessa. <laughs> Hi. And hi, Sarah. All right, so Sandra, what were your initial thoughts? Rating? Oh, you just like went straight into it. Oh, I don't know what else you wanted to talk about. <laughs> Sorry. I, like, oh, um, I don't know why I'm laughing. Uh, <laughs> it's not even funny. Um, 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 I, I initially, I feel very, I guess towards the negative, it wasn't really a lot of the book that I found enjoyable. There was like small parts, like very small parts I could like, but nothing of no, no, none of those parts were like explored enough for it to like carry the story for me. Mm. So like we'll probably go more into details uh, like soon, but like overall I gave it like two stars. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one you get, which I think is. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like I'll explain like more in detail soon, but like general, yeah. sorry. <laughs> True. Let's see. Hello, hello. Let's see. So for me, I gave it one star. <laughs> the only things I liked about the book was some aspect of the LGBT rep and the initial concept of the book. That's it. That's all I liked. Everything else was trash. <laughs> Everything else was bad. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Anyone loving the book just like laughed immediately. <laughs> yeah, but also, yeah. We are here to trash it. So if you enjoy it, don't get rid. No, <laughs> don't be offended. You can love your book. <laughs> Seems like the people in the comment are agreeing with us. Yeah, I would not have gone through the audio. Yeah, I I started reading it physically, and then I signed up for Scrib just so I can try to get the, use the audiobook. I literally signed up for the thirty day trial just so I could try it. And the audiobook, the audio, the narrator for I already can't. I don't remember how they pronounce their names. Like Arlian and um, Taryn, the the two uh, male perspectives. Um, I don't know why he sounded so whiny in the audiobook. <laughs> like he sounded <laughs> like a whiny teenager. And I was like, oh, that's... I mean, I guess it really fits the characters, but <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but it just it just did threw me off guard. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I agree. It was a one star for me, 200 days, then a two star, heading into a three star if the last 70 pages were turned off. Yeah, I get that. But I said, if the last 70 pages were phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Like, no. were, were they, though? Like, because were I was just like. <laughs> it just, things happened, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't interesting. I wasn't interested in this entire book. There was not one spot where I was. In <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's see. The writing was awful, but suddenly around 300, it felt like it was written by a different person. It did. It did a little bit. Like, it was less obnoxious. Maybe. Or at least maybe I just noticed it earlier in the book and then I just stopped noticing it because I was used to it. Maybe. I might have been. Or it. maybe like the first part or like the second part of either of those parts was like rewritten more times since like in other day. Who knows? And oh, yeah. that's why it felt different. Sure. Or written at like I didn't, I didn't really notice that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get you. See, I haven't finished it. It took me all week to finish. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. So, well, Sandra, what did you think about the writing? I'm curious to think of. Uh, the writing. I was I was going to look at my notes, but I didn't write anything. Um, <laughs> it was it was it was it, it, 
the writing really like I don't I apparently I can't even speak. I'm like speech class. <laughs> it was it was okay. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really I wasn't that bothered by it because I'm really used to reading like why I where they just like they like throw out everything they can in the yeah. moment. Um but I felt like it didn't really give any information. It kept like saying a word and then it was gonna explain that word for like a whole page. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna remember what you explained to me and you need to like experience it. It was a lot of like telling, not showing because we didn't actually experience any of the things that just like explain, for example, all the courts in like a sentence. And I was like, I have no idea four pages later what you said. Uh, like, of course I could have taken notes, but I feel like it wasn't enough experience in the book to like actually, mm -hmm. I was gonna say get down the facts and stuff. And the dialogues were so weird, I guess. I like the dialogues didn't feel natural. It was really like, uh, what's it called? No flow in it. It just didn't feel natural. So I was just sitting there like, this is weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you're, I don't remember if you remember when we were talking about it when we were doing the um, the live sprints, how I went on a little mini rant. I was like 16 pages in and I was like, why does the author explain everything the exact same way? <laughs> And yeah, I felt that entire way throughout the whole book. I felt like this needed an extra two to three drafts as the book. Yeah, yeah like yeah. It needed either editing or like, um, what is that one service that's always advertised on YouTube? Grammarly. It needed Grammarly or something like that to like, <laughs> this sentence is worse. <laughs> I, I also feel like... Um, the writing didn't do the book any favors, especially like fleshing out the characters and stuff. But because the characters could have been interesting, but they were all like, I don't, I don't really have words. <laughs> they didn't really do much. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we we can go through every single character afterwards. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do we want to start with Nazca after this comment? <laughs> Shout out to Nazca for being ancient, but somehow sounding like a valley girl. Exactly. What's a, val what's a valley girl? It's like a girl. Let me do my best valley girl impression if I can. <laughs> Where it's like, oh my gosh, girl. Like, look at like the stereotypical like LA girl you'll see in the movies. Oh. Kind of like that. Where it's like, she, yeah, you know what I mean? I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I really, I, I kind of know what you mean. I was like, sure, I, yeah. I, like I, a I thought... teenager girl kind of thing. Wasn't she like 300 at least? Like in the beginning, it starts with Electo being banished. It's just not really a spoiler because it literally happens in the first chapter. Yeah. Uh, she, she's like, who power? She had killed some humans and they punished her by banishing her to the human world. And mm -hmm. then she's like, oh, I love someone and I would never love anyone again. I, I shall be emotionless. And then we just skip to like later, I assume like 300 years. So I don't know. She lived with the humans for a long time. Mm -hmm. And she still is exactly the same person. <laughs> Which is like, granted, she had decided not to like develop. I guess she just decided to be the same person, mm -hmm. um, which is, I granted, really impressive because I don't think I could just decide to be the same as I was. Uh, I guess like, yeah, whatever. But then I feel like she was written in a way that was really like try hard, mm. trying to be like the cool, emotionless badass that is Asian, but she acted like she was like fifteen. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw a review that someone said that she um, is pretty much Selena Sardothian, and I found that was hilarious. <laughs> but like, she's a bad Selena Sardothian because yeah, Selena she's like, actually seventeen, and she yeah. acts like Selena, but a like a more childish childish Selena. But like, she's like three hundred years old. So what is your excuse? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I would understand if she was 17 and she was acting that way, then I'd be like, okay, it's annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I if get she was it. banished and it's been like two years later, for example, mm -hmm. then it would have been com made complete sense. But yeah. like the fact that she was like super old, I was just like, I am not buying it. <laughs> yeah, like I, yeah. it's it's how it's hard for you to like I'm like even if you put like in your head like I'm not gonna change, I feel like in some way you're still gonna change, especially over like a hundred or however many years she was on earth you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like i find it very unbelievable that she didn't change a little bit <laughs> yeah during that time um it's someone asked what's the effect of being stuck in a teenage body yeah 
But like, even if you're in teenage body, I think like you still have brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. <laughs> you're like, it's not like just because you're in a teenage body and you live for 300 years. I mean, Edward mm-hmm. Cullen was smarter than this and he was in a teenage body. Yeah, at least Edward Cullen like changed as a person over his hundred Yeah, like one percent, but like he was brutal. Edward, actually, Edward actually acts like an old man. Yeah, he actually <laughs> acts his age. Oh, but yeah, he, speaking, he literally acts like he's a, like he's ninety nine. Yeah, but I just really think that this character, nice Nausica, I don't even know how to say the name. Um, I think that it was really like a try hard to supposed to be the cool character. Mm-hmm. She just exactly. wasn't cool. <laughs> that, <laughs> by the way, you know, the relationship that develops when not the mm-hmm. and another character, we're going to talk probably in the spoilers. That relationship does not make sense nope. for her character because for what she decided and how she's been for the last 300 years and then that, char- that relationship devolves, devolves in like, I don't know, two days. Does not make sense in any way. And that just made her character even more unbelievable. So it ruined it even more. Oh, yeah. It would. All these immortal beings falling for baby humans. It's like, yeah. Like, I, I watch a lot of anime and read a lot of manga. So maybe I'm desensitized because I feel like you see a lot of, like, 300-year-old lo- lolly girls falling in love with a 16-year-old boy. You know what I mean? So... It's still not cool, but like I'm used to it. So. <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess. I guess. It's normal, for example, in K dramas to like, yeah, like an ancient being and they fall in love with like, they're not usually teenagers, but like, or something. Mm-hmm. So I'm lagging, I think. You're like freezing up, or if you're freezing up, <laughs> but like, I, I, was like, like yeah, I was like, you're freezing up a little bit. The <laughs> cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. But yeah. Let's what see. what else? What? Um, there's Arlo, who is the... Yeah. Mm. yeah. Arlo was like the half-fae, half-human. Mm-hmm. And her whole character is being half-fae and half-human and yeah. having to like live her life being part of her royal family, but not being part of her royal family. Yep. And then she finds out things i don't know did we go with spoilers i don't know i don't know when when yeah. did we spoil <laughs> we could we're, well, we're 12 minutes in so we could well like i feel like is there more we want to say before spoiling like yeah I'll... i think we could talk about the characters without spoiling i feel like maybe yeah i think so i think so too um arlo to me as a kid really give off strong mixed kid energy in a way where it's like do you know those people who like make their identity their entire personality like that's Arlo. Yeah. <laughs> like that was her whole personality is I don't belong. I am not like other girls. I'm different. Like that was her whole personality. But, and I was like, I mean, no, I'm tired of you. No. She it was also like one part of her character that really Oh, you're breaking up again. I am lagging. Let's see. Mm-hmm. You're still froze. Oh, okay. Ooh, Hello. Te- you're good. Okay. <laughs> you're you're back. You're- <laughs> I just I like I have an internet problems. No, you're good. What what were, what were you saying? I was saying that um, there's one part of the character that I know me more because she doesn't actually do anything. She doesn't have any skill set whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It's just literally, literally handed to her on a platter. And it was the most annoying thing. I hate that. Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They really gave her the chosen one little trope moment. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's, like it's fine one. that they are the chosen one. I'm all for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like it was very like I don't know how to describe it. Like you know Alina in Shadow and Bone, mm. she's also the kind of person where she's like the Sun Summoner. But oh, at yeah. least she kind of like has to work for like to control powers and stuff. She has to do things. 
Mm-hmm. But even though, like, it's very, like, you are special. Yeah. But here, you didn't see, like, that at all. Yeah. But, yeah. And then there's the other two characters, Aurelian and <laughs> Vihan, was it? Oh, yeah. Um, can we also just say that I felt that Aurelian and Vihan was really put on the side compared yep. to the other two main characters. They did not feel like they had their own story at all. Like, the other two felt at least they had, like, their own thing. Um... But like Aurelian and VM was just kind of there. I don't know how yeah. to describe it. Yeah, like um, Nausicaa, she had like her own storyline with like being banished and being a warrior or whatever. And Arlo had like the whole like, I don't know, being the chosen or whatever. But Aurelian and Via, they was literally just there like they're going to investigate and then their story interconnected with other ones and then were basically just there. Yeah, it, it felt like they just kind of walked into the plot. Like they, they yeah. were just the characters who they just came. Their own thing. No, the whole storyline was them liking each other, but thinking the other person didn't like them. Yeah, the whole plot line was miscommunication. That was their yes. entire plot, yes. and it yes. was the crap out of me. I'm like, if y'all literally had one conversation, literally all this would be fixed. Literally all of it would be fixed. But no. <laughs> also, Vihan. He gave me such, um, what is it called? Like, rich boy, like, oh, what was me? Energy. Because he would constantly say, I'm so alone. I have no friends. When he had, like, dozens of friends all the time. And I was sitting there, like. They were like, literally sitting in a group of people hanging out. He's like, I'm so lonely. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like you're not you're mad you're, you're a pretty boy who's rich okay eat the rich like <laughs> there's people there it, ge- it gets off to people like there are dying there are people dying kim you know <laughs> Qu- yeah Qu- it was like i think we just said that we are soon going to spoilers because people already talked a bit spoilers in the chat oh, but yeah. i just wanted to say one thing is that uh the pop culture references like we talk a bit about like the writing and the world we might as well just go into it but i expected it to be a high fantasy book i did not expect it to be um what's it called urban fantasy i didn't know it was going to be in our world and it disconnected me every single time it was the most annoying thing came out with all of these pop culture references and i was just like stop you're ruining the whole story like i don't know how to explain it but i want a story with like fey and stuff i want mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it because none of the main characters were like human. At least Arlo was, I guess, like, like half human. Half. But then it, it just didn't feel natural that like, this one character was going around like, oh my god, I'm gonna go with Twilight. Like it was a Twilight reference there, by the way. Yeah. Um, because like I don't know how to uh, like the older Fae book I read is like really separated from the human world, and they were just so integrated. And then they just like took up iPhones and stuff, and I was just like, wait, what? I feel like that creates weird stuff. I don't know how to describe it. Plot holes, potential plot holes that they just use iPhones. Yeah. It, like it, it, it gives weird vibes, especially where it was like, there's one point they were like, oh, look, I just threw out my Apple Watch. I'm like, that was weird. But there was a whole part where there was the, or like what the, the their, their claimed terrorist organization was posting videos on YouTube. <laughs> And I was like sitting there thinking, and they were like, "We have to try to get rid of them before they uh, people think that they're not real." And I'm like, first of all, I feel like this would become like a creepy pasta situation where people were like, people wouldn't actually believe it, but like yeah. the conspiracy theorists would probably believe it. And then the, um, but then I'm also like, even if you delete it, you know that's going to be re-uploaded if it's something weird like that. It's on the internet; it's not going to get deleted. So it was, it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> I feel like. They were like the author was setting up like a world where it was two separate worlds, but then they also like threw in all these things where it was the same world, and yeah. it just the distinction was not clear enough for me for like where does the line go. So that would like just made me feel really put off of the whole story. Like when we came to like Twilight references and stuff, I was just like, What? Um, and I- also just saying, considering the fact that, um it is like an LGBT book. I like, yeah. Uh, I was really surprised that there was a Harry Potter reference in it, considering how much damage J.K. Rowling has done to the 
but especially trans community. And I was really surprised there was a reference to Harry Potter there at all. I was just like backlashing when it came. I, oh, yeah. Like I am in that like in all books recently when it's a Harry Potter reference, I don't want it there. But mm. especially like an LGBT specifically queer book, I was really surprised that it was there. Yeah, I would and think that they would remove. Yeah, I would think that they would remove it and like add it in because this came out after everyone has known how horrible J.K. Rowling is. Oh, just yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah, the the um, pop culture references like didn't feel seamless at all. It just felt like, let's mm -hmm. just answer it here. And you're like, what? why? Did, why do we need this? See, it was too fey to be urban fantasy and too modern Star Trek references for hype. Yeah, I'd say. See. Oh, the vampires. <laughs> uh, I you. Like, uh, you haven't read um, uh, Mortal uh, Instruments, like Shadowhunters books, but yeah. I have. And like there, there is fae and vampires and all those different things. And like there is like the underworld and like the human world. And like Clary, our main character, is like in both worlds because she finds out she is a shadow hunter. Yeah. But then it feels like this line is there, so you feel really like distinct between the two worlds. It's more natural, I guess. But here, I just like I was missing that line. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, like it just felt like they were just kind of thrown in. Like, hey, let's have vampires. Why not? Yeah, let's have all different creatures. Yeah, um, it yeah. was, let's see, the fairies had their own social media. Yeah, that was weird. They had their own social media. And I was like, I could just already marry a so, like a face and stuff. Yeah, yeah see, there, like, was, there was fairies there were two different beings and I was so confused about it. What, what did you say? All right, what? No, what did you say? Fairies and what was two different creatures? There was the fairies and the fae, and there were two different oh, yeah. creatures. And then there was the unseely and the seely, and it was so confusing, even though she tried to, like, the author tried to explain it so much. I was just sitting there like, I am lost. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really, as I said, like, demonstrate that much. It was just, like, a lot of, um, yeah. <laughs> pretty much well, um, yeah. there's a random part that I noticed that it's probably not like um big oh yeah yeah it's social class and not race that's what I thought too but <laughs> I'm not sure yeah I think so too yeah, yeah. that's what's normal in all the fairy stories I read yeah that's what I assume but I haven't read many fae stories the only ones I've read was an enchantment of ravens and I DNF the girl prince that, that's it. <laughs> uh, I so feel like I haven't read that many either, but like yeah. I read like Sarah Jamas, Colin Black. Relied on you. Yeah, I relied on you already knowing what what the fairy terms is. And as someone who hasn't read a lot of fairy books, I was kind of sitting there like, I don't know what this means. <laughs> and it, it didn't really explain like those concepts. No, I was confused too. And I even read about fairies before. Hello, I have a cat here who's being super naughty. Stop. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Stop it. Stop. She's like ruining the curtain. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. No. Oh. Did you not ruin the curtain right in front of me? It was very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But no, there was a random thought that I like noticed while I was reading the book is that there there this there's like a lot of queer rep, but why is everyone white? Just <laughs> They like, love white people. Like all of the POVs are white. Ever so it was like I there's a lot of people like there's a lot of rep, and I was like, mm, but there's no there's no brown people. But like I don't even remember how the author ex uh, uh described the different people, but didn't you say that the main character, like this character, was like brown? Or did you check that? Yeah, I looked and the description was saying that she was tanned. There was a lot of tanned, but tan doesn't mean you're a person of color. Yeah, tan that's means true. that you're not like extremely pale. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. Oh, we also discussed before in uh, uh, my sprints that why does she have a katana? <laughs> why? Just yes. why? Like, um, I know, like, I, I feel like katana is a Japanese sword but like of course you don't have to be japanese to have it but i just don't the, why i don't get it yeah like why does she have a katana like it couldn't have just been a regular sword like it had to specifically be a katana like it was weird yeah. like yeah was it, it was so random and it was never explained why the character had it it was just like yeah she has a katana and i was just like okay but like that's my thing you know let's see yeah, yeah. prior knowledge 
Toronto's pretty diverse. Yeah, I heard, I what I hear is that to, Toronto is a very diverse city, so the fact that everybody was white didn't make any sense. Which I, I was going to say that like if this was turned into, for example, a movie, I bet they wouldn't cast everyone white. But like, mm. unless they spe specify otherwise, characters are assumed white because yeah, but, white privilege and like yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, but in this book, there is deep descriptions of everything, especially the characters. Oh, yeah. And they're all described as white. Um, I just, like, blocked it out, so I... <laughs> no, I legit started skimming the descriptions, because I'm like, they the author would go into depth of being like, this is the kind of material the floor is made of, and this is the specific shade that the wall is, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> it felt like that. Nice comment, it's definitely needed. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Give him the choice of fur. Yeah, there was some random ass Greek mythology with like yeah, titans it, and stuff. And I was just like, what is going on? It was so weird. Yeah, I felt like they just wanted to just grab things and throw it in. And they're like, oh, I like this. Yeah, from this culture. But, but, like, that's this cool. Culture. Like, authors do that and it can be done really mm -hmm. well. But here it was uh, not yeah. done well. <laughs> See, apart from all the court where they were, is a vertical rainbow list of colors. Yeah. Speaking of the courts, <laughs> why was the summer court set in Nevada? <laughs> why, was it in, why was this book so North American centric? Because the author is North American. Yeah, that's what I would assume. <laughs> but I, then it is describing it. This is like the world of the Fae. I'm not assuming all, or like, I'm not assuming everyone lives in North America. Uh, yeah, I, I guess it seems maybe like the author didn't like. Let's say uh, they put like uh, a court in like Japan, it would require much more research, and maybe mm -hmm. they will be afraid to do it in an insensitive way. Yeah. Um, so they wrote maybe in their own lane, which is okay, but like also becomes a bit maybe boring. Can you not eat the plant that is poisonous, please? <laughs> no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait. I just have to move the cat. There. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's good <laughs> sorry oh yeah nevada canada yeah it didn't it just didn't make sense <laughs> i'm trying to remember was it ever described where the autumn or winter court was because i can't remember i mean probably i just like kept blocked it off <laughs> i know because like i can't remember if it was ever explained maybe that'll be like in the future books which maybe. Which would make sense because if they never talked about it i'd be like well where's the other half of the courts <laughs> Like the whole story from the beginning was weird too. It was like mm -hmm. that one like Fay or whatever was dropping out and I was like, oh, like in the city where the murders were happening it was literally like you gonna investigate, you promised. And I was just like, that's the whole reason for everything. Kinda I don't know. It, like that initially was weird too. Yeah, it I don't I wish I knew. <laughs> Let's see. It was set in Nevada because gambling. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, cheap drink. I was thinking it was set in Nevada because it's warm. Because <laughs> it's, it's the summer court and it's hot in Nevada. But then I'm also like, there's other places like the Sahara Desert. Like, Egypt would be interesting. Dubai. Like, they're, you know, I don't know. Yeah. They seem to be pinched from Sean McGuire, who explains it's better why the high court is in Ontario and the summer court. Okay. Uh. Give me two seconds. I need to get rid of this cat. It's very annoying. Two seconds. Oh, yeah, you're good. Let me see. Let me remember some of my notes while you're gone. <laughs> I was like, I had some more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, was, I was so distracting. I couldn't concentrate. I, I just know, threw her into another room. <laughs> <laughs> and I closed the door. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, you were you were A-OK. -okay. <laughs> no. Oh, there was one part that I didn't understand. Um, why was um Arlo's decision to go to university such a big thing in the book? Like because because at the beginning chapters, it was told that she was going, that her weighing got de um, delayed until she was 26, right? And she said mm -hmm. she was thinking about not going to university because she was like, well, I might be part of like the, the, 
the fake kingdom. And I was like, but you're going to finish university before your next weighing anyway. So I don't understand why this is such a big decision. It didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. She could have just gone easily. I, I didn't get it either. Yeah. I was like, and do you not want to go? Her dad had just like chosen to forget the whole her dad is like, yeah, like how to get the whole like uh, society. So he kind of just like abandoned her, and I was like, like abandoned her whole life. And I was just like, what? Why would you do that to your daughter? Then she has to lie to you like her whole life. He was a selfish dad. Yeah, he no, he's really he's shitty. Father, like, yeah. didn't it say that like part of that reason is because he hated everything to do with the fairies. Then why marry one and have a child with one? Yeah. <laughs> hate them so much yeah. why have a family with one that makes no sense <laughs> like yeah what let's see oh what was your thoughts on celadon who is celadon that is our oh, cousin yeah yeah the only character i like <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. The only kid I was cool with him. I was like, you know what? I'm just like, can we follow your perspective? Because everyone else just does nothing. Literally, Please. it would be an interesting book if he was me. If he was one of the pair point of views. Maybe in the next book. Who knows? Maybe. I because we don't it. need the other perspectives anymore. They're so interesting anyway. <laughs> they were interesting at the first part, and they're not going to be interesting later. I'm not. Yeah. No. <laughs> Our own university is like having plans later in the day, so you just don't. Yes, yeah, so you just don't do anything until then. You're like, <laughs> you're like, you have time. What are you gonna do in the next eight years? I don't know. That like, was weird. I was. Really I guess. Scared. Let's see. Was it ever explained how he knew about the Fae? Was it about how Arlo's dad knew about the Fae? Uh, I don't remember. I guess he just fell in. I don't know. Maybe uh, you know, like Halo told him, but I think he knew about it because he was together with one. But I don't know how he found out about them initially. Yeah. He when he was together with them, he knew they were Fae. But mm. then, like, he chose to leave that world, and then they erased his memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how did they? How did he find out in the first place? I don't know. Maybe like <laughs> uh, the her, uh, the mom like just fell in love with him, and then she had to tell him. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. But like, why would you fall in love with this ass? He was clearly had no spine. <laughs> yeah, like it's like it's like it's the same energy as when like I've seen this a lot of times. It's like when a black woman falls in love with a racist white man, and you're just like, why would you do that to yourself? Like it makes no sense. It's the same energy. <laughs> like I don't know. It was like, I just can't imagine why she would be together with him in the first place, um, and why he would be together with her. Like. Uh, and then how did they get a child? I just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, like she she was a beautiful princess. She has other mm -hmm. options. It's not like found like an ugly ass human. And was like, yeah. oh, maybe I was like, ah, uh, yeah, sure, dude. Yeah, I think, I think she even described her father as, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> he's plain looking like he's not a fantastic. <laughs> so it like didn't make sense. I don't know. Yeah, I'm surprised Cell wasn't a POV too because I feel like, like Cell did more. Sorry, I just interrupted you. No, you're good. Julian and Vian. Cell did more than those two characters. They were POV characters. Yes. I feel like the author literally, it, it almost feels like the author put them in just to like have an MM pairing as main. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, to say like that. And that's disappointing. I feel like they could evolve better in like the next book, but at the same time, in the first book, they had nothing. They, they could have been POV characters in the next book. Yep, and then not been in this one, and it would have made no difference to the story. Yeah, it would have made the book shorter, and it would just would have been better. <laughs> we didn't even need their point. We didn't even need their point of views. They literally added nothing. And you know, like you know, like when they went to the market, and then Vian had to say like a truth to like because he was going to say like the reason truly why uh, he wanted to find out about the murders, and he had to confess to all those things. And I was literally just like. I was Please. I was so it happened like four times where he would say something and she was like mm, deeper and I was like can we get on with it <laughs> I get it he's sad just let him help people <laughs> no one loved him as a child and then the whole like Aurelian thing where like and um, his, his mother just got Aurelian so that he he could I mean, what was it that he could kill that she could kill Aurelian to hurt 
to hurt. Um, but yeah, was that it? I think and I was like, oh, I, I need to distance myself from him because like, then he won't care for me anymore. Something like that. And yeah. I was just like, this storyline sucks. <laughs> it was, there was no, oh, again, it was just based off communication. If literally they had one conversation, there would have been no conflict. <laughs> In like the first few chapters with them, I did ship them because I was just like, oh, I like this all like uh, secret or uh, trying to keep their distance. As, hmm. And then it just dragged and dragged and I was just like, yeah, it just it didn't I just I just want one of you to die so <laughs> that we don't need to deal with this. It's like, let's just have a tragic love for like one of you is dying. And they're like, no, I love you. Like, let's have that. At least I'll be interested. Like, yeah, um, I, I was very really disappointed in their POV because when we were, he was like instantly like oh i like this character because i always liked like the guard to like a more important person mm -hmm. and then um, nothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was just... and then he could hack he had like could hack computers and stuff <laughs> I don't know. Remember? yeah i know that was so random it was really i didn't i, I was like what are you is this a different person like <laughs> No, one person we haven't talked about is Hero, who I forgot oh existed. Oh my god. Oh, Hero existed. Oh, that was just the most annoying shit because it was literally like in one of the first few chapters, it was like uh, the dude, the dude uh, recruiting Hero. And then Hero was the one controlling like the, what's it called? Like the thing killing people. I don't even remember what it was called. Yeah. And then they found out it was Hero. And then he died. It was so, um, and that was it. <laughs> it was so <laughs> obvious that it was gonna be him too, because in the first chapter it was like, oh, this is really, or I don't remember what the thing's name was, but um, I think it was the hunter. Uh, was like talking to him, and I'm like, wow, this really seems manipulative. I bet you anything, he's gonna he's gonna make you do some evil things, and I I was right. <laughs> <laughs> and then that dude is like had to keep Arlo night alive. I can't even speak. He was just like Arlo, Arlo, like that dude. And he was just like, but I mm -hmm. want to keep Arlo. And I was still like, um, what I was trying to say is that uh like he li we literally knew who was doing it all along. And then I stopped him and there was like literally no twist. Nothing. It was just <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> it was I, like at least you expect some kind of twist or like um, interesting adventure. I don't even know, but like, since we knew it was Hero all along, and that other person who was also like in the council because all of that him in the elevator or whatever. I don't even remember. Wasn't it him? I don't even. Know. I think so. Yeah, yeah, but either way, uh, but they don't know it's him though. But like, we know who it is all along. So at least you expect like some kind of at least battle or that will make like the story worth it. But we knew who it was from like pay. Page 50 and then on page 500 they found out and then they stopped it and that yeah. was all <laughs> pretty but it was i felt so dumb i <laughs> twilight had better um villains i st <laughs> my gosh let's see the dad's dislike of Faye must have been while he knew of the magic world because then they delete his. Yeah, it must have been while he knew of the magic world. Sorry, I was disconnecting again. Oh no, you're okay. I was. I just thought you were quiet. I was like, what happened? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I think really and Varen remind me of Gray and. No, I can see it. they not do really not. like it. <laughs> oh yeah, do you like that series? Do not talk to me. About Gray and Run, actually, just don't talk to me ever about that series. I have so, so many things to say, and we're just gonna move on because what? I cannot deal with it. Oh no, you don't like it? <laughs> no, like, I love the first book, I gave it five out of five stars, and the next book just ruined everything I liked. So, I, oh, no. I just looking at it makes me sad. No, I read the first yeah. one. I we gave it four stars, and I'm like, ah, that felt good. Like it just, did, I didn't feel like I needed more, so I was like, I'm good. I just, so I just, I'm glad I didn't read more. <laughs> Let's see. Don't read more. Even hero talks to them over the PA system like he's jigsaw. Yes, oh my god. <laughs> like he's jigsaw. He's like, hello. <laughs> he's, he's I haven't seen jigsaw, but I'm sure. 
Like, you know, like, you know, in Saw where, like, he's just sitting here and he's like, you're in one room and you have to cut your own leg off to do that. Like, to the point where he just feels like the master manipulator, but not in a good way. Like, he felt like a Scooby-Doo villain and I just wasn't. <laughs> like, he was like, let me just do my whole villain monologue speech in front of you guys. Like, why? I'm a Seesaw or Jigsaw, so I don't know. No. I just take it from what like commercials and references I see things. I like that's just where I get my things from. But no, I don't. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Someone said, "Oops, sorry, Sandra, for bringing up a curse of Dr. Lonely." I hope oh, you yeah. feel bad. Oh, like, no. don't talk to me about it. I, it's a Imagine if you read the third book. <laughs> I have the third book. I'm going to read it, but I know everything that happens, and I know I'm going to hate it, but I'm still going to read it. Worse than the second, or? Yeah, I'm gonna hate it more in a second. Oh but... no. Yeah. I better see a reading vlog. <laughs> <laughs> no. It will literally be like hate reading. I don't that's not so bad. I know oh, people no. don't like it when people do that, but I need to finish, okay? Mm -hmm. I need to know how much. Yeah. I'll hate read the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? No. I'm joking. Hate read a sequel live. <laughs> that would be funny. We're just like we're just a hate reading a sequel. We'll just have another live show with the sequel. <laughs> It'll be like, hey guys, we hated this as much. <laughs> and just like, can we now we can speak about all those fucking dice? She literally got handed to her uh, that creature thing and was like, mm -hmm. you're special, you can be the chosen one, or you can go to your normal life. And all was like, gasp, what do I do? <laughs> it, gave, it gave me, it gave me two scenes that it gave me of was the scene in Harry Potter where it's like, you're a wizard, Harry. And like, <laughs> And then they were just sitting there and they're like, wow, a wizard, what am I going to do? Like that. But it also gave me that one scene from the Matrix where it was like, here's the red pill. Here's the blue pill. Take one. <laughs> a mix of those two. And I didn't like it. <laughs> the dice was so weird. It was just like yeah, handed to her and then she could just do things. I didn't even understand, by the way, how it worked. She nope. threw it and was like a bigger chance for something happening and she could literally mm -hmm. just speak it into existence. And I was like, how does that even make sense in a magical perspective, in a world perspective, that she can literally do anything? How does that make sense for like the whole story? How yeah. is that useful? And like, why was she giving it? Why was she given it? Like, why, why is she special? We didn't ever, ever find out. And then mm -hmm. Nessica just fell in love with her and they kissed in the elevator and I was like, why? Yeah, like like it didn't like I was confused. I was trying to figure out what like how the dice magic worked, and I was like, maybe it's like alchemy and it like converts something and to make it physical, but that still didn't make any sense because it's not converting anything. It just poof. Yeah, it was. It didn't do anything. She it just, was a MacGuffin dice, where just things happen for plot convenience <laughs> because of the dice. But. It just Someone said, I want to face her to help her access the browser to change the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine then. But why is she handed a dice that does everything for her? She doesn't actually do anything herself. She's not trained. She doesn't, mm -hmm. she doesn't deserve it. It's just little handed to her on a platter. Uh, yep. Blah, 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 blah. yep. So. Nope. She just happened to be there and get the dice. Who's the dungeon master when Arlo uses the dice? The entity of luck. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It, I just... It, oh my gosh, it made no sense. At that point, I was just like chilling in a book and then the dice came and then that, that was the point. I was literally like, <laughs> really don't like this. I think if the dice wasn't there, I might have given it two stars. Yeah, I think if like dice the dice there, brought it down. It was literally like just a plot convenience, mm -hmm. such a plot convenience. It didn't feel, uh, I don't know, I'm awful like maybe a character just suddenly getting powers and then like they have to do things with them. Like, that's a plot and a lot of stories that are good. Mm -hmm. But here it would just felt like too much of a plot convenience. There was not yeah. even like consequences to the dice. Like she could just do anything and then like she had to take a break afterwards. She literally stopped time and then they were all just like, oh. Yeah. Like imagine there's consequences where you can only use it once a day or something and it'll like hmm. be immobile you or something. Then that would be interesting. And maybe she's in a battle and she has to, th she's already thrown yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to like hurt, you know, like that would have been interesting, but no. Nothing or like, like she threw it and then like I don't know one of her limbs fall off or something I don't even yeah. know you or know like, you get the point yeah or like yeah, she like a ice or something and like so you know like I don't know it, 
Let's see, why did Nausicaa think it was that? Yeah, I don't know why she thought it was amazing either. I feel like Nausicaa had seen it all. I don't know why. Yeah, I... Nausicaa was just bored. She was just like, Ali, it was too long and I want to get laid. Literally, she was like, I've been here for how long and I haven't had, I have, I haven't had the good puss. Like, let me get something. Like, that's what it felt like. Did you just say, did you just say, I haven't had a good puss? <laughs> That's exactly the, the energy she gave that entire book. Ooh. Like, I just need she's it. just like, I have to treat her like she's special so I can get laid. Yep, that's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe their dice ties into Nevada on some deeper level. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's an allegory on gambling, guys. <laughs> like, I I feel like maybe the author does know more things than we do. Like, why electors are special and all those different things. And it is like the oh shit uh first book in a series so i get that like pieces will come together and will make sense later mm -hmm. but there's a thing like when you're writing you need to decide how much are you going to give the reader for it to make sense and how much am i going to hold back and in this case there was yeah. way too much holding back for it mm -hmm. to like make a consistent story that is enjoyable yeah uh, at least in my opinion yeah, yeah. Like, I, I feel like it was both it was holding too much back but i also feel like they gave us too much as well. Like there was a lot yeah. of book that could have been saved for later books that we just like didn't need to know of yet. Um, and to the point where now we're just like, we're sitting here thinking like, oh no, like <laughs> what is all this? We're just thinking too much now. Yeah. But also think like the story, as I said, gave too much like with Hero, we knew everything, but I don't know how the story could have been interesting either. Like with the murders, fine like okay let's see let's say that we didn't know hero was behind everything right or like that hero was controlling the thing but then if we didn't have that part with hero it would literally just be this random character in the end speaking to them on the speakers and be like yo i think it would be more interesting like an example uh in the end if we didn't know it was hero like what if the person on the speakers were like her dad or something that would have been like oh, that would have been, i would have yeah probably. that would have been a ride and yeah, I, I, was like, like, I didn't see it coming. Like you know what? Maybe yeah, that yeah, was yeah. maybe that was the original initial vision, and she was like, "Nah, let me switch it up," because that would have precedent in the story. It would be shocking. It would actually be good. I think I actually might have would have maybe given it three stars if I, if that was the twist, because <laughs> I think that would have been really interesting. Yeah, that would have been an amazing twist. If it was Arlo's dad. But um, I think ultimately this book needed to take away 200 pages and get a new writer. That's what I have to say. Full stop. I literally, I literally wrote about a book in this live show. I'm <laughs> we, we literally came up with something better. <laughs> Give Celadon a perspective, make Arlo's dad the villain, get rid of two of those perspectives. I think it's already a better book. <laughs> Boom. I think also uh, Vien's mother, you know, the queen of summer. Yeah. I think she is going to like go after the king for something like they could duel and then like you become the new king or ruler, mm -hmm. right? So Vien's mother yeah. is going to challenge that position. And I think that is why Vien's perspective is going to be important later, I guess. But it was kind of yeah. boring. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I feel think, like in order to establish it for later books, they needed to have him in this book, but he was stupid. It was stupid. Yeah, I think maybe actually would have been cooler. Also, like you cut out all the like boring shit in the book, right? It would have been mm -hmm. cooler if the mother stepped like towards the king in this book, and then it could have like ended with a king dying, like the current king, mm -hmm. and then all his position because she's a part of the current royal family. Her position yeah. would be really like uh, unsafe. And then, yeah. like, we would have loads of things to explore in the next book if her dad was the killer and if, like, the king just died. And then we would have so much, much more interesting things to look forward to. Look, yeah, that would be in both. There you go. That would be really, <laughs> yep, I'd buy it. Also, having Arlo's dad be the killer also would make sense why just just so many things happen or in relation to the like to the human world that I feel like didn't make sense in a lot of ways where it's like if it was Arlo's dad he would be able to like perfectly yeah maybe actually Arlo's dad has a bigger role to play since it seems like it could have been a set of thing maybe we would find out more in the second book maybe. I don't have my 
copes up though but yeah like it didn't even feel like we needed Arlo's dad in this book other than just saying like yeah he doesn't like the fae and he left so the reason he's here makes me think he's gonna be there but I'm also like I don't think the author is smart enough to do that like you know I what I mean? maybe the <clears throat> dad would like find out something about the fae world and he's gonna be like what the fuck is going on and then uh, Arlo maybe has to like and uh, like explain more I don't even know yeah. Yeah, like I'm thinking that Arlo's gonna accidentally slip or something happens like yeah. that. Like we almost did a couple times in the book. Maybe Arlo's forced to go to adversity. Oh, <gasps> that would be funny. That'd but be funny. she can just dice her way out of it. She did, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. What if the fake court thought they deleted the dad's memory, but it didn't take. Yeah, and that yeah, yeah, like exactly. filler. It would have been perfect. It would literally would have been so good. Let's see. He was a pawn to get Arlo to the right place. I expect him to disappear. Oh. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The dad's British accent in the audiobook was horrendous. <laughs> it was funny. Do we, we have some notes from Maddie. Do we want to look at those? Yeah. Let's See look at So, Maddie gave it a three to three and a half star. Oh, I just pulled it. So, up. more than us. More than us. Yeah. Um, she said the concept was interesting. Um, didn't understand the world at all, like where everything was. Um, lost track of the plot multiple times, and it felt like it took a long time for the plot to kick in. Definitely true. Yeah, she said she enjoyed most of the characters, especially Nazca. Mm. <laughs> As we talked about earlier. <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. We, we don't. Okay. And then LGBT rep was good. Glad there was such a variety. However, it could have been more present and more clearly stated on the page. Although labels aren't necessarily for everyone. It frustrated me that I regularly had to check the author's list of which character had what rep. I couldn't discern it from the text myself or itself. Yeah, I get yeah, that. Wait, when uh, was there a list of rep? <laughs> yeah, there was a whole list of rep. And I'm trying to remember where I where? saw it. Most of it's not in the book. Let me. It well, was on the actual Goodreads. I have it pulled up, but let me. I don't have those rep pulled up. By the way, it has a three point nine five star, and I have a feeling it's going to go down from there. I just got a no. feeling. Like I am a bit sad for it because it is a queer book. Uh, mm -hmm. It has a cool concept, but like the execution of the story just didn't hold up for it uh, to be a high rated book. At least not for me. Yeah. Like someone else. Really loved it. I'm really glad for that. Yeah, like I'm, I'm happy that you like it. I just don't get it. <laughs> oh, where was I? Oh yeah, I'm saying all the major characters were white or white coated. Where is the rep? I saw it somewhere, and now I can't find it. <laughs> I'm lagging. I'm sorry. I'm like looking and I'm like, I had it somewhere and now I can't find it. <laughs> anyway. Oh, here, found it. So it says there's lesbian rep um, with depression, pan main character, gay main character, bi main character, gender fluid side character. I don't remember the gender fluid side character. I don't remember the gender fluid side character either. And I can't discern of who is lesbian, pan, gay, and... Oh, I remember the gender fluid side character. It is the god yeah. thing that gave the dice. Oh, oh yeah. And, okay. I think. Um, also, it was a troll under a bridge. Oh, yeah. But is that enough rep to say that there's gender fluid rep in the book? Or is that just like... You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's not really there a lot. Also, I don't can we know. talk about... Someone said it would have been super interesting to read about Nausicaa and other furries. There was one fury, fury, that like, just came up and was like, you are not a fury anymore. And then it was also something with a wild hunt. And I think like the wild hunt was done such mm. a weird way. And yep. like in fairies, there's usually a wild hunt. But here it was just like done like they were all like sad teenagers. Wait, wasn't it? It was one of the characters in wild hunt that was uh, in control of hero. I remember now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh but yeah, there's I also someone that. in the council that didn't like them. Oh yeah, the hunter used Z as a pronoun. Yeah, I completely forgot. Um, mm. I think that just kind of shows of how prevalent the rep is, I guess, or that part of the rep. But I also can't remember who is lesbian, who's pan, who's gay, and who's bi. I can make a guess, but I can't remember specifically. Um, especially, think, do you know I what think, I mean? 
I think uh, Nausicaa and Rillian, they both said they were gay on page. Yeah, I think so. But I don't know about Vihan and uh, Alecto. Uh, yeah. Not Alecto. Astro. No, what? Arlo. Arlo. <laughs> they all have similar names. Now. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, those, those ones are more implied. Um, yeah. Someone at Illumicrate liked it enough to put in the box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or they were paid off enough, or they were given enough money. Sometimes I I don't know if like uh, about subscription boxes enough, but I wonder if like sometimes they just like the publishers contact them to ask them to put books in the boxes rather than yeah. they actually choosing every single one personally. But I don't know enough about it to actually know because sometimes I feel like it's so random the books they put there, like no one has ever heard about them. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I might be wrong completely on this, but I had subscription boxes for like many. I had it many times. I don't know how to describe it, but I don't know. Yeah, like it would feel very like I feel like maybe um, different like subscription boxes boxes maybe are like affiliated with publishers and like they mm -hmm. only get the books from that specific publisher. It's in order, pretty much like it's an extra marketing ploy in order to get like hype about it. And since the book is in the subscription box, that produces more sales, so it's more likely to become a best a New York Times bestselling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, of course, they get like a someone said they get a percentage off. Of course, they do. Yeah, like well. so they wouldn't be profitable for them to have it um mm. oh, wait. but uh yeah yeah but there was also one that says it felt like the author was checking off rep boxes for sales and yeah it did feel but like also that. the author is queer yeah the um, author is queer. so it's not so it's not like but, mm. but i get what i you think mean. the author just really wanted to write a queer fantasy which is That's totally yeah. valid mm -hmm. um but just that the story wasn't the story <laughs> was not there like, yeah I, I was reading a review and it said this book really feels like a de debut and i'm like yeah it does <laughs> it really gives i'm really sad about it actually i do i am too because like, I, I, I would love for this kind of book to be like super popular and cool mm -hmm. and also like up with um i don't know like other why i've had to say it's like really popular but like the story was just too weak. There was too many elements that just didn't work well together to make yeah. it awesome. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I thought it would be like a four star read. Yeah, because that's what that's how what I read it every single face and case book. <laughs> exactly, you literally give everything like a four star. You're like, I love it all, and so I love everything, and then this ruined my streak. I know we were like we were waiting for the day that Sandra was gonna give something like a, like didn't like something because Maddie had one that that she didn't like. I had one that I really didn't like, so we were expecting, <laughs> which is funny. But I um, you didn't like the city we became. Because, oh like, no, I <laughs> this love it. Same rage feelings. But this this is to the city of the game, it was like it makes more sense at least, I guess. Yeah, like yeah, the story, if I would say which one was written better, easily the city we became was written better. And I would say if I had to recommend one of the two, I would recommend the city we became more. So like you know what I mean? The it's different quality. That one is more yeah. I understand why more people like it. While this one, I'm like, I need to see it. Like, you need to give me some explanations. Like, because I don't understand. <laughs> but it's like, um, let's see. Oh, so it's just looked at the about the author and it says she has an obsession with Final Fantasy. That, yeah, I could see that with the dice then. The author is they, them, by the way. Not oh, she. they, them? Okay. Just saying. Because it's that not. person wrote she, yeah. Okay, yeah, so they, them. Yeah. Mm. It says there was a lot of info dump at the beginning and not explained about the courts or different species. Yeah, we definitely needed a map or a glossary. I think that would have been yeah, cool. anything, anything. Please, that would have I made it so much more easy to explain. But I was surprised it didn't have a map or a glossary because I feel like that's very popular in YA fantasy. Yeah. So. Oh, but what the last comment said about Final Fantasy? If it was set up as a book. I guess like similar to Final Fantasy mm -hmm. and the dice came along. I think we would all have been more like, oh, it makes sense, or like feel it fitted more in the story. And now it didn't fit. And th therefore it was annoying. Yeah. I just yeah. felt like the author just kind of wanted to like throw it in there and be like, I like dice. Here's some dice. <laughs> I feel like also there's so many more things to like say, but we're running out of time. Oh yeah, we are running out of time. Is there any uh, oh Quick question, question, will you read more in the series? Because <laughs> uh, I know you like, because I know you always like continue reading series. So I was curious to see if you're actually going to continue in the series or not. I mean, probably. <laughs> I 
Uh, because why? <laughs> because sometimes it can get better, right? But will it? No. <laughs> I feel like it gets. I feel like when it's such a bad start, it's kind of hard to go up. I mean, I, I'm gonna read it. Does that make sense? But I don't know. Like, it's not like when it comes out, it's gonna be like the first thing I pick up. But I will read it eventually. If you guys write the sequel, I will. We'll 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 rewrite this entire series. We we have ideas. <laughs> Just like if you fix a bit like on the how you explain the world, mm -hmm. um, remove some of the point of views. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the dad is the like the killer. I'll read it. Yeah. Then like you fixed everything. Like we can keep and then like make yeah Nesteka or whatever the character a bit make a bit more sense. Mm -hmm. But we did talk about her and um, Carlo. Did you ship it? No. Oh. No. It just didn't, it didn't make sense. I didn't, I felt like their personalities didn't mesh very well, especially at the beginning. The only thing that Arlo mentioned was how pretty she was. That was yeah. the only thing. She was like, oh, that beautiful girl. I was like, do you like anything else about her other than her looks? Because it didn't feel like that at the beginning. But I just, I feel like they just knew each other for a certain amount of time. But I, you can like someone, I think, like not be in love with them but you could like someone for just meaning and you could be attracted to them yeah but i feel like they didn't really have any reason to like each other they just like interacted with each other and i'm like oh we like each other now uh and for like um what's it called for um nasaka to like be a character that like had closer off her feelings for such a long time and then suddenly open up for such a short amount of time mm -hmm. it makes sense but yeah. like for example with v and then really and that grew up together at least i understood why they liked each other more yeah. even though they had less page time together mm -hmm. uh, because their relationship was more established, even though I said we didn't actually get to see them that much. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I be tempted to read it if it got better. This is why I said, yeah, I feel like if I heard that it got better, like I would have to hear people who rated it low, like the sequel, and then I might consider it as long as the writing got better. If the writing's the same, I'm not doing it. I will let you know. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> also, sell it on spinoff series. I would be down. Maybe there will be more POVs next book. Who knows? Yeah. Or maybe we will cut some. True, true. But I think this is a good ending to the stream. What about you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I think the next book is going to be about like uh, the king dying. Yeah, like, I think so. Of it's going to take over. I like the, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We I'm not gonna recommend a queer read because I have oh, yeah, we read. should. Do you have a queer read to recommend? Yeah, I, I, we could do fast. I oh. have given again. <laughs> <laughs> this is like is this the third time I talked about it. I just I read remember. this. Given William Faber Natsuki Kisu. This is a, a manga and an anime. I just watched two episodes of the anime though, but it's like about the band of four guys, and they are literally all queer, like mm -hmm. all of them, and they all want to kiss. <laughs> Yes, each other, and it's the first thing. And in the ma uh, anime, you can like actually hear the music and stuff, and it's beautiful and just beautiful. And that was all I wanted to say. I just read it, and it's just so <laughs> cute. <laughs> so please pick this up. That was no. all I wanted to say. Your turn. No, the anime is so good. You you gotta wait. I cried so hard. There's like a there's like an episode like eight like eight episodes in. You will sob. I'll tell you right now. But, but I I already read past probably the. Oh, you um, might have. Anime, it's the, it's like, the it's their first performance. That's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's but, like hearing it, watching it will also like the uh, double experience. So yeah. Oh yeah, and with the emotion, yeah, it's definitely di it's definitely different. Yeah, as an anime. So yeah, I don't have one because I haven't <laughs> been reading queer books. I've been I feel like such a bad ally. No, I feel like because all I've been reading is white women fiction. <laughs> I can hear you like hitting the table while saying it. Because that's how bad I am about it. It's like I just keep reading, you know, like those, like JoJo Moyes. I read JoJo Moyes. Why? I Why? So no. I, was, I like, used to love. I was in the yeah. mood for like, I'm going to call it white woman escapist fiction. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like, she goes somewhere new and she's never been here and she might fall in love with a local man. And that's what I was in the mood for, for some reason. So I don't have any <laughs> But I like I feel like sometimes a bad out too, but I realized that I have so many books that I bought years ago and then you know everything was just white and straight. Oh like, yeah. Much more than now. Now it's a lot more diversity coming out. Mm -hmm. And that's like all the all the books that was popular back then was like white and straight. And I like I need to read the books I own, but then it seems like I'm only reading white and straight. But I like if I 
wanted to film a TV are like more diverse and he buys so many and like hello I I, I don't have a for that so I need, to, like, <laughs> I need to like think really like I buy this for like specific things like my mm -hmm. challenges and stuff then of course of course I like buy others too but I just yeah yeah it's a struggle oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's okay. a totally different conversation we can leave <laughs> oh wait wait we gotta show the um the pics for oh, next yeah, yeah 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 sorry so I, next month we're gonna be reading oh wow There you it's go. Not it's, this it's this huh? month. It's this yeah. month. This. This said next month. Listen. Well, we're having the live show next month. That's what I meant. Yeah. Like in the so the the book for April. That's what I meant to say is Black Wings Feeding by Alex London. It's a YA. I believe there's MM rep is the rep that's in the book, and yeah, it's about birds. It follows <laughs> this pair of twins, and I can like train birds and yeah. I, one of them is gay like there's a girl and a boy and a boy's gay mm -hmm. um, yeah it's have you really read it? yeah oh okay so i'm the only one who hasn't okay cool yeah but i don't remember shit so it's all fine okay. i only remember like there's birds yeah. and weird people in these caves and i was like y'all read it but i met the author <laughs> so i met the author yeah. i don't know who you are behind <laughs> and then and then May. May. <laughs> Listen, okay. And then May's pick is The Never Tilting World by Rin Shapeko. Um, I'm trying to, I think there's female, female in the book. Yeah. I was like, I'm trying to remember. I think that is like the main relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think that's the main relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this book looks pretty in the book. Okay. But yeah, this is, I, I don't know much about this one either, other than it's a YA fantasy, you know? And yeah. <laughs> We are reading a lot of YA fantasy. I just realized. Yeah, is June Y as well in the Ravenous Dark? I think so. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of. We need to make yeah. sure we're adult. Uh, I think I think we have like what we have as placeholder. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah. Oh, we need to plan that. But yeah, <laughs> 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 I was like, we need to go over that. But yeah. um, but yeah, we're gonna be reading in the Never Tilting World. Um. The Black Wings beating is going to be on Maddie's channel, and then the Never Tilting World is going to be on Sandra's channel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was making sure I was, we are being chaotic. But yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually not the one saying it, so I'm like, let's do this. Let's see. I'm glad you're excited for Rune Chipeko. Same. Because it's amazing. And people are one star in her books again, which. Why? Why are they doing? They always do it to her. I I don't understand. I think the authors also date them, by the way. For Renji Pekka? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I just want to say. <laughs> okay, I was like, I don't remember. But okay, cool. Are we? Oh, okay. And then it says, oh yeah, and then I think the sequel's coming out soon. Or is it the right? sequel is out. Oh, see, I don't. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't keep it. But I don't. I think it's gonna be a third book. Look at this. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's always like your lower bar is is doing something. Yeah, I think I ruined my mob camera, but it's fine. <laughs> oh yeah, but I'm glad you guys can come for us to rant <laughs> about yeah. our live stream. Um, I feel like we were very chaotic. We were just like everywhere going. Yeah, we were but like, yeah. by the way, this other part point. <laughs> But um, yes, um, join our Discord. Um, we're and join us next month. For Black Queen's beating. Follow the Twitter that we uh, are really bad at tweeting. We, are, we will be better, I promise. We will be better at tweeting. <laughs> we did say that like uh three months ago, but yeah, we will be better. I did the one I did like three tweets. Okay. <laughs> I, I will did do like two. All right, we will do better, we promise. But yes. Uh thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>